Hey everyone, welcome to a little bit different video on my channel. Not about 3D printers, but uh, this time we're going to talk about a Arduino project that I've had kind of taken up space in my head for a year or so, something like that. So I kind of wanted to just get started on the project, finish it off a little bit, and then um, see if I could make it work how I envisioned this to be. So what I built here is I built a... Um, ESP based Arduino Rover. So this is a 4x4 or all-wheel drive if you will um, little rover. Uh, it's relatively small. A little bit smaller than my hand here. Um, it runs on N20 motors, four of them, one on each side here. And the reason I'm using four, not only for the actual all-wheel drive, but I'm using that for the steering of course as well. So one side of this will turn and then the other side will go in the other direction so it can actually uh, rotate. I'm using relatively small components here so I'm using um, this motor driver here so this is a L9110 uh, Arduino motor driver and then I'm using an ESP8266. So I like the 8266 it has Wi-Fi on it um, and that's kinda all I needed so it kinda just fits in there on the bottom and um, I kind of just wanted to make like a, a robotics platform that I could drive around the house. I could make one for my daughter and we can kind of just drive around, go over obstacles, race, you know, just kind of play around. And um, these are pretty cool for learning coding. And um, I mean, you could expand on this chassis, uh, have mounts for cameras and all sorts of things. So you'll see definitely there's uh, a few of these types of cars um, out there. Smars, I think, is one of them. Um, there's definitely some different ones. I wanted to make a wheel-based one, not a tank. I don't want to have to 3D print track. It's always difficult to get the track the right distance and um, tension the track and that type of thing. So I want to design a very, very simple one. And then one mandatory item I had on this design was I wanted metal interface for the wheel to the motor. Um, and this is because you could potentially drive this outside or, you know, have a lot of uh, resistance when you're going up hills or something like that. And I don't want a 3D printed part spinning on the metal motor shaft. So these are actually designed to bolt directly to the actual metal flange here. And that flange connects directly to the motor. So you, you don't have to worry about wearing out like a 3D printed part there. So... I wanted those to be metal, that was very important to me. And then I do plan on redesigning these rims so they're two piece, so you don't have to use supports. Um, my supports are pretty ugly here. I'm not a fan of supports, but these rims right now have to be printed with supports and these are just PLA. Uh, in the future, the outer part here would be TPU or something like that and then the center part would be PLA. These actually do work quite well, especially in the house on carpet and stuff like that. So. Another goal I wanted to do with this was, if you look online for Arduino controlled RC cars or something like that, or robotics platforms, you'll always generally see people are using a Dabble app on their phone. So there's a free application on iPhone, I believe as well, and Android called Dabble, and it's a very, very excellent um, you know, platform for learning, and it has a lot of Bluetooth functionality, so it has a built-in gamepad, all that kind of stuff, and it's very easy to control one of these with a smartphone. Everyone has a smartphone, right? It makes a lot of sense to use a smartphone as a controller for this, and it's great. It does work very, very well. I have built one of these using that. However, for myself and also like for my daughter, when we're driving it around, it's very difficult because there's no actual physical buttons. My button, my, my finger will always like slip off of like the touch sensitive area and then the rover stops driving or something like that. It's, it's not very cool or it's not very fun to have that happen. And I wanted this to actually be useful, not just to be a project that you would build and then it sits in a closet. I want people to enjoy driving this around. So um, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to make my own controller for this that used physical buttons. I want to actually have really good control over this. And of course, this is a prototype. I'm just powering it with a power bank here. But again, this uses another ESP8266. 
And the wiring here is r ridiculously simple, a ground and just a GPIO pin. There's no resistors used in here. I'm using the pull-up resistors that are built into the ESP, so I don't need resistors for the buttons to work, and this works awesome. Right now I just have forward and I have left and right steering. So this to me was very important. I wanted physical buttons, I wanted a physical controller, and I can actually have up to seven different buttons on this controller right now. Uh, it seems kind of like the limitation right now. I'm definitely a beginner at Arduino. And um, it seemed like there was only seven GPIO that I could use available for buttons. So what is actually happening here is I'm actually using um, ESP Now protocol for this to communicate to this ESP. And... What's really cool about it is there's no overhead with this protocol. So it's it's for a small amount of packet transfer. It's very tiny, like 250 uh, bytes, I think, is the amount of data that you can send. So essentially what happens is this ESP8266 basically spams out my commands to a MAC address that I've set up in the code. And the MAC address is this device. So I'm pressing buttons here. It doesn't have to go out to a router or have any overhead involved. It's very, very fast. It's basically instantaneous. It is as fast as Bluetooth, as far as I can tell. And I don't need to use anything else. I'm just simply using the ESPs to communicate with each other, and it's really, really great. So I'm, I kind of just lucked out, and I found this ESP Now protocol, and it works really, really well for this, and I really want to expand on this um, controller. I could also put in here like an ESP uh, with a screen so I could actually have all my functions. So I could set different speeds. You could turn on lights and stuff on the rover. Um, a lot of different things you can do on this controller. So right now, I kind of just wanted to get this out of my head, get it into the like physical world, print it, design it, and then expand on it once I start using it. I'm like, oh, this would be nice. That'd be nice to have. So. I've designed this rover to run off of um, 18500 batteries here. They're a little bit smaller than an 18650, of course. And uh, they fit in there quite nicely. Again, I wanted this to be relatively small platform, so you could drive it around a house and that type of thing. So generally, I buy these off of Amazon, and they come in a package of two with a charger, and they're very cheap. So that's eventually what's going to power the controller as well. So... I'll make a little battery compartment here that'll just sit there and it'll be much nicer. So when I do a final revision of this, I'll put like a backing on it and things like that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make a quick video here on what I've been working on. I just kind of wanted to get this out of my head, get it um, out there. I know it's not 3D printing um, kind of relatable, but it, it is 3D printed parts and it does, um, I think it's pretty neat and electronics are pretty cool. Especially I do like tinker around with Arduino and things like that. So what I'll do here is I will um, just quickly run through the code on my computer real quick. And I will provide um, the Arduino sketches and GitHub parts if someone is really interested in building this. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else is, but myself is interested in uh, this particular type of platform using a controller like this. Um, so yeah, let's uh, hop over to my computer and let's do a really quick rundown. It's actually very simple code and let's go over the code on my PC. Okay, let's uh, quickly go over the Arduino sketch theory that I have for the controller and also the car. I'm going to go through this just really quick. Um, I'm definitely a beginner at Arduino and a beginner at coding for sure. So I'll quickly go over this and then... Um, I'll have a little bit of a video of the car driving around my office. So here's the sketch for the controller. So I'm importing two libraries, ESP8266 Wi-Fi and ESP Now. ESP Now does use the Wi-Fi. Um, and like I say, it's just a direct link between the two ESP. There's no router and there's no uh, connection to the, the internet at all. And then I'm setting up seven variables here. So pretty straightforward, seven buttons. Here is the GPIO pin on the ESP. And then I put in a comment here. This is the actual label on the physical uh, device. So GPO, GPIO 12 is D6 on the ESP. We're setting up another variable here, a flag basically that's set to zero. 
This is a flag for when the button is not pressed and we'll go over that a little bit at the bottom. And then we're defining a structure, basically an alias. So we're basically saying that my data is, um, has a variable called int a. And this is the data that we're sending when a button's pressed and you'll see that down below. Here is the MAC address of the car. So this is the MAC address of the actual car we're sending data to. So uh, 84 CC, et cetera, is the actual uh, MAC address. And then this is the uh, function here so we can send the data out to the car. This is our setup really quick. We're setting up a serial so that we can actually get some data back on the computer itself. We're setting up Wi-Fi in station mode. We're setting up ESP now and then we're setting up our buttons and we're using the internal pull-up resistor so we don't need resistors on the controller. Here's our seven buttons. And then here is the data send uh, information. Again, this is all in an ESP now sketch. It's just a copy and paste. And then the main part of our code here is the loop. So our ESP is constantly running a loop and it's checking these buttons for state changes. So here's our first button. So we're saying if button value, so if the button number one is low, meaning it's pressed, I want you to send these two things. I want you to send uh, number one to my data dot a, which we set up at the top. And then I also want to send uh, a flag. We're going to set that variable to a one, that variable at the very top here that we set to a zero. I want to change that to a one and you'll see why later on. And I've just copy and pasted this for every single button. So button two, it sends uh, number two as the data. Button three sends number three as data and so on. I'm printing a bit of information into the serial console just so I can, on my computer, when my ESP is plugged in, I can press a button and I can see the serial data uh, being sent. So pretty straightforward. At the bottom here, essentially what I'm saying is if a button is not pressed, I want you to send a zero to the car. And that's how we're making the car stop. This is also increasing the actual flag, uh, our zero. It's increasing it by one so that we can actually make sure that a button's being pressed with this flag set to one here. So it's just basically making this flag ready so that a button's able to be pressed. So again, if no button's pressed, we send a zero. If a button's pressed, we send a number corresponding to the actual button. And that make a, a little, it will make a little bit more sense when we go into the car sketch. So I'll open up the car sketch here. Car sketch is the same. We're importing two libraries, the Wi-Fi library and ESP now. We do need to set up the GPIO for the car motor controller. So there's two GPIO per motor. So this is motor one, Think of as it is, this is motor one on the controller and motor two on the controller. So we need two GPIO for each motor controller port. Our motor controller can handle two motors. And what we're doing on the car is we're actually setting up, we're plugging in two motors per controller port. So this motor A1 or motor A, I should say, has two motors, the left side motors and motor controller B has two motors, which are the right motors. We're not using an LED in this sketch. I was just doing this for testing. We have to set up the same uh, alias because now this is receiving data. It has to have the same structure set up to receive the data. Um, this was just in here for the ESP now sketch. Uh, I've just put that in there, copied and pasted. I, I don't even know if this is necessary, but again, I copied and pasted. And here is our function to receive data. Again, we're going in setup. We're just setting up Wi-Fi. Um, we're printing out the MAC address so that we know the car's MAC address. Whenever you flash the sketch, it'll tell you the MAC address in the serial console. We're setting out the pinouts for the motor controller. And then we're running a loop. So all this loop is saying on the car, saying, hey, if I get a three, I want to do this on the motors. So when I receive a three, which is my forward button, I want motor, uh, motor A, I want it to go high on this GPIO and I want it to go low on this GPIO, which basically tells the car to go forward. 
Same thing for motor B. I want it to do the exact same. So motor channel A and motor channel B are both set to forward, which moves the car forward. If I press the left button, which sends a number four to this car, I want you to make the motor A go reverse and motor B go forward. This makes the car turn left. If I send a number two, which is the right button, I now want motor A to go forward and I want motor B to go left, uh, go reverse, which makes the car go right. And then here's that zero flag. If no button is pressed, the controller always sends a zero, which stops the motors. You can see the motors are going low, which mean they're stopping. So that's a really fast rundown on how this works. It does make a bit more sense when you build this and then you can start playing around with different values and, and, and correlate it with a change. But I wanted to just do a very fast um, overview. Again, I'm a beginner. I'm sure there's a way better way to do this, but this is how my sketch works. And uh, I encourage anyone to build the car and to upload these sketches and play around with it. It'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, like I said before, I will link below here um, on the description, you'll find all the relevant information for this. And I will go to a video of the car driving around. And here's a quick demo of the uh, little rover driving around. Actually works quite well. One motor doesn't want to spin all the time. Um, I think it's more so the wiring. Uh, it's not a like really good connection to that one motor, so it's not getting full power. But again, this is a very early prototype. A lot of changes are going to be made to this to make it even better. But as you can see, it's quite capable. Um, I would like to change some of the speeds on like turning and such. It does turn a bit too fast, but it's relatively controllable. So yeah, i uh, just like to say thank you everyone for um, watching this video. I know it's not normal 3D printing. Uh, I will make a uh, GitHub for this project so they can go ahead and get the files and code and stuff like that. Um, just know that it's definitely a prototype and still progress is being made, but uh, Definitely comment below uh, some suggestions if you have or anything like that. And uh, I will put together a bill of materials as well if anyone wants to build this. Thanks, everyone.